Hi, my name is Don McCardle. I work for Autodesk. I primarily support automotive customers and design using Alias and VRED. My background is doing automotive visualization, where I used VRED for many years. I understand that world a bit better than Alias, but I am trying to keep up with some of the latest subdivisional and Dynamo player tools. I'm fortunate to have access to development where I can ask questions, make requests, and sometimes even catch things that need to be improved. I'll be making videos from time to time to help you with your workflows and show you some new stuff. So if you have requests, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the viewer who commented about my audio being one-sided. I didn't realize I don't wear headphones. There is a setting I found in Camtasia that was off by default and should have been on. I've corrected those first three videos and uploaded them. Feel free to like. And thanks also for Dinesh Kumarm, who suggested I do a video about the basics of Dynamo Player. So let's start at the beginning and here you go. So Dynamo became available in Alias starting with version 2019 and Dynamo is the visual scripting language program. We also have Dynamo Player tools that became available starting in 2021.2 and that's an Alias Auto Studio surface and concept. And you can always find the toolbox under your help menu. There's Dynamo resources, and you can either open the toolbox from there or in your palette under transform, you have both Dynamo player and Dynamo. Notice that there are tools in three major categories, subdivision, general, and patterning. And there have been updates and changes and improvements in every version. Now looking in version 2025, in the toolbox we have six categories, so it's a little bit easier to find what you're looking for. So to start using a Dynamo Player tool, you can find it in the drop-down, and then you will be given instructions in the prompt line. You can either click on the inputs as it requests, or you can just generate something and fill in the blanks later by selecting them from the toolbox. So I'll do that. I'll just make the seat by picking the back curve and you can either hit accept or the space bar to continue. Some of these options are optional so you can always accept or hit the space bar to bypass them and continue selecting. Now I'll select the seat curve and the headrest and build So it generated a seat and I have different options in my toolbox to change things like the width and depth, how many spans there are and whether there are creases. Say I wanted my seat width to be wider and I'm already at the maximum end of the range. So if you open up that script in Dynamo by clicking on edit in Dynamo and find that attribute then you can change it here. I'll change this to 800. And then you can just save that script anywhere. I'll just save it onto my desktop. So when I hop back over to Alias, you can see that the seat width has automatically updated. So I can just run that script again to update what's generated, and there my seat is twice as wide as it was. Now it's automatically updating because I have auto updated checked. If you want to play around with the sliders and not have to wait for every single update, you can uncheck this and then turn it back on when you're ready for it to build. And if the tool fails, check that auto update is not on when you're first generating something. It's fine to keep it on when you're editing and adjusting what's already created. Here's what that car seat generator looks like in Dynamo. It's fairly complex. 
The nice thing about Dynamo Player Tools is they're ready to go. You don't have to do any visual coding unless you choose to. History is retained with the things that Dynamo Player creates. So if you want to go back and even if you don't know what tool was used, you can always query edit whatever was generated and it should load your tool with the options that were used when it was created. You can also enter the inputs after creation or change them. So for this parquet tool, if I look at what was what was selected for curve A, it does select in my scene, curve B, curve C, guide curve, and so on. So I can pick any of these things and change them after. So let's say I want to, instead of have curve five, I'm gonna clear that and select a different curve. I'm just pressing my spacebar to update the build. And maybe instead of curve eight, I want to clear that and select this curve. And instead of the same curve, I'll have a third option, this one. Another thing that could cause the tool to fail or might work to your advantage if you want to try some things out and not have it build while you have auto update set to on is to suspend history. So I'm going to do a global suspend. So I'm going to pick this guide curve. Maybe I'll move the pivot and maybe I'll scale it. And then when I'm all ready, I can turn off the global suspend and my build will update. There are a few tools for which you need to set a construction plane. And this is either for generating new entities or reopening a file where you want to edit something you've already created. So in the last video, I showed you how to do that with place and scale by picture. MS modify by picture is similar. So I'll go ahead and show you how to use this tool. And first I'll make sure I'll pick that construction plane and set it. If I toggle it, it's on the world axis and I want it set to that particular plane. So going back to this tool, I want to make sure that I have the right image selected and I already did the create picture. It created this image and then I modified it. So I just have some simple ramps. So I need to tell it which picture to use. So I will browse to that. And then I can either follow the prompts or just select from the toolbox. So I will select the surfaces I want to lay my pattern onto. Hit spacebar. And this one requires that you select a guide curve. And then the object to place are these arrows. So when I'm ready, I'll hit build. And you can see I generated something that could be used as a shoe tread, for example. This tool lets me flip the placement. So if I change it from back to front, and I don't have auto update on, so I'll just hit update it rebuilds and I can play around with the placement this way. The only other thing I can think of to help you get started is that you do need a package installed in Dynamo for some of these patterning tools to work. So when you're in Dynamo, you can search for a package by going to the package manager and search for one called multi-surface patterning. Here it is. And if it's not installed, just click install. And then you'll have to restart alias. I hope for some of you beginners that this video inspired some curiosity and that you try out some of these Dynamo player tools for yourself.